a reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broken and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you, sir. Today's Mass has been offered for Jerry Dennis and his husband. As we come to pray, we have the beautiful Gospel of the Our Father. Jesus taught us how to pray, and he left us two great prayers. He left us the Our Father and the Mass. So as we pray the beautiful prayer of the Mass, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Jerry Dennis. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 11, 1-11. Brothers and sisters, if only you would put up with a little foolishness for me, please put up with me. For I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God, since I betrayed you to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted from a sincere and pure commitment to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preach, or if you received a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I think that I am not in any way inferior to these super apostles. Even if I am untrained in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. In every way we have made this plan to you, plain to you in all things. Did I make a mistake when I humbled myself so that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I plundered other churches by accepting from them in order to minister to you. And when I was with you and in need, I did not burden anyone, for my brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. So I refrain and will refrain from burdening you in any way. By the truth of Christ in me, this boast of mine shall not be silent in the regions of Archaea. And why? Because I do not love you, God knows I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsible Psalm number 111. Your works, O Lord, are just and true. Your works, O Lord, are just and true. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. Your works, O Lord, are just and true. 
Majesty and glory are his works, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. Your, Your works, O Lord, Lord, are justice and, and truth. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. Your, Your works, O Lord, Lord, are justice and, and truth. As sons, through which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, In prayer. Do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, <coughs> neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus taught us to pray, and if you want a good explanation of the Our Father, the best I've ever seen is in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The whole fourth section is an explanation of the Our Father, and uh, the Our Father has seven petitions. The first one deals with God, and the last ones deal with us, and it basically when we go to God, we go to God together. Our Father, you know, people that say, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. You know, they miss the point of the Our Father. It's Our Father. We go to God together, and God is Our Father. This uh, Sunday we celebrate Father's Day. But God is our true Father. God wants the best for us, and He is ours. We go to God together. And God is in heaven, and God is holy. Hallowed be thy name. That means God is the ultimate in holiness and we are called to be his holy people. We want his kingdom to come on earth as in heaven and he gives us our daily bread. The better translation of the daily bread would be super substantial bread which is clearly the reference, uh, the, the reference to the daily bread of the Eucharist, Jesus Christ himself. And we are always to forgive those who trespass against us. We want God to forgive us. We have to uh, forgive those who trespass against us and we pray for God to keep us from evil and many great saints that's all they do is pray the Our Father day, uh, time and time again so today in honor of Jesus teaching pray the Our Father as many times as you can today it's a beautiful practice just every time you think of it say an Our Father people are always asking us to pray for them and, and, and uh, you know, I'm constantly getting requests for people to pray. And I love to, when I, you know, almost right away, I try and say the Our Father, Father. So uh, that's a nice custom. If somebody says, pray for me, just quietly say the Our Father. Let us pray. We thank God for the gift of prayer. May we always pray the Our Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for Molly Jimenez, who is in intensive care, that's Deacon Roberta's wife. We pray for um, Tim's neighbor, Tim and Kathy's neighbor, who is in on hospice. We pray for Marsh Blaisdell, for Terry Ziffel, for all those who have asked for special prayers, and the many people who are dealing with cancer, people like Joyce Swanson. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
We pray for the successful completion of our new church. We pray to the Lord. For all the people doing quads, all the people studying their faith, we pray to the Lord. And for an end to all violence, war, especially to domestic violence, we pray to the Lord. And as we get ready to celebrate Father's Day, we remember especially all our fathers living and deceased and the important role fathers play in modeling God our Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and we remember Jerry Dennis for whom the Mass has been offered. May he enjoy perfect happiness in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We ask you to answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, forever. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by your word, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease to her to gather the whole human race into one, manifesting the covenant of your love. She dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly in earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today, quote from Mother Teresa, say Mother Teresa, she said, Jesus has made himself the bread of life to give us life. Night and day he is there. If you really want to grow in love, come back to the Eucharist. You're indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love, and when his once for his disciples are now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the pastoral sacrifice of Christ that was handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and into the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is the most holy trinity, past Christian, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be preserved for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for me. Good morning. Good morning. I, I'm just overcome by all the different details of the Our Father. Uh, one of our
quad programs is called Adopted. It's in the first program, and if any of you could get a hold of that and read it, you would be so touched. It's all about how God has adopted us. And the, the author of this program said that he and his wife had children of their own whom they dearly loved. But when they decided to adopt a child, and that child arrived at their home, he was so thrilled and filled with the Holy Spirit that he had this child. It meant more to him than anything he ever had. And I feel like that's where God was when he adopted us through Jesus Christ. It was very special. Now, Deacon Norm, uh, I must thank him for his helpful description a day or two ago about Matthew's coverage of the Sermon on the Mount. Let's look into the most significant section, which is what we're talking about today, the Our Father. Today we use that prayer most profusely, just as Father was saying. Why? Because it was the way Jesus himself taught his apostles and us to talk to God. And although Matthew's version is in today's reading, many biblical experts believe Luke's version is closer to Jesus' actual words. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us and do not subject us to the final test. In both versions, Jesus refers to God as Father. Long lists of divine titles are not necessary. Jesus used Isaiah's words in chapters 63 and 64 for this title. Petitions of God's glory are mentioned, and then those concerning our human needs are in both versions. The ending we now say, referring again to God's power, glory, and majesty, was added by the early church, referring to David's prayer in 1 Chronicles. All in all, a glorious prayer, yet simple and to the point. Dear Father, we love you and want to do your will. Amen. Amen. Very good, May. Got a huge email here. The Wednesday night church service coincided with the last day of hunting season when the pastor asked if anyone had bagged a deer. No hand was raised. I don't get it, the pastor said. Many of you said you were missing last Sunday because of hunting season. So I had the whole congregation pray for your deer. Well, it worked, one hunter groaned. They are, they're all safe. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let's pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord is your faithful. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, O God, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct our hearts and 